can't believe the stone rolled away. We came to wash him with oil. Empty, the tomb's empty. I can't believe he's actually gone. I was just a fisherman, and he called me to be a disciple and to be fishers of men. Do you remember how he healed the lepers? Remember how he washed all the disciples' feet? Remember how Jesus taught us everything? Remember when he made the blind to see? He healed the paralyzed man. I can't believe it was just three days ago we had the Last Supper with Jesus. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them. saying, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God.
Remember when he raised Lazarus from the dead? Do you remember how he um, loosened the tongue of the man who could not speak? Remember when he cast out demons? Do you remember how Jesus fed thousands and thousands of people with just five loaves of bread and two fish? Remember when he healed the blind? Do you all not remember? Jesus said he would come back for us. Am I on? Is it great to be in God's house? Amen. Somebody moved me to the back row this morning. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think I may just take Jesus' spot right up here in the front. But thank you for being here today. I pray that you have been blessed this morning. I pray that from the time you entered the property, uh, you felt the presence of the Lord. Somebody waved at you when you pulled to the top of the hill. Uh, we just wanted to make sure you knew that you're welcome here today. and uh, We're just excited to be celebrating the empty tomb today. It's hard to celebrate, uh, I guess, the, the cross, isn't it? Is it hard to celebrate the whipping post? Because that's where our benefit came from, really, that we get to declare today that we're healed by that, right? We're healed by his stripes. We get to declare that because he died at Calvary, then my sins can be forgiven. And because he's alive, right, we can have eternal life. And I think about Easter, and I titled this morning my message on, at the sunrise service, What a Day. And I think that we can declare that even right now. What a day this is to reflect and to remember. What a day it is that we just talked about, or they just talked about him healing the multitude, him feeding the multitude. And time and time again, Jesus showed up, showed up, and showed out. And I believe today, if we'll allow him to do that, he is still in the healing business. Amen? He is still in the resurrecting business. I think that there's folks here today that should you not have a walk with Jesus Christ, should you not know him as your Savior, then today is your day to let him resurrect some dead things in your life. If your marriage is in turmoil, if your family is falling apart, allow him today to resurrect those things uh, that are falling apart in your life. I'm going to share just a moment while we're doing some reflection, right? They said remember, so I want to challenge you to remember on Friday. On Friday, we saw him burdened by our sin. I don't know if you kept up with what was happening this past week, but there's a lot transpired since uh, we welcomed Jesus into the city, since we gave him uh, a red carpet treatment and allowed him to come into, hopefully, into our lives as well as into our city. And it said, we shall, hang on, my water left me. I hope that one's fresh. I spotted it, and I said, if no one is drink out, well, it really don't matter. I'm thirsty, so it is what it is. But on Friday, we saw him burdened by our sin and falling under the weight of the cross. And I'm wondering if we were moved by that. If you've ever seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, it's probably the best depiction, maybe the only way we could ever realize what possibly took place that day. He, was, he fell under the weight of our, our cross, yet rising again with steadfast determination, I love that he didn't quit. I love that though he could have called a, a legion of angels or a league of angels to come and take him away, he chose to stay there. Each step was a testament of his unwavering love and selfless sacrifice that he was willing to give for us. I think that when we come for Easter service, it's for one reason only. 
I hear people talk about being an atheist or maybe an agnostic. They either don't believe in God or they don't believe in anything. And I think about that, but I see them buying chocolate bunnies and I see them buying Easter eggs for the grandkids and I see them purchasing these things and I quietly walk through Walmart or Dollar Tree or wherever I happen to be at the moment seeing them doing that and I silently walk through saying, oh yeah, they're celebrating Easter. I don't care if it's a chocolate bunny. They're still celebrating the resurrection of my Lord and Savior. If they ever want to admit it or not, if they ever want to declare it or not. And so just knowing the sacrifice that he made and the agony of each step it should echo uh, of the depth of compassion that he had for us, the depth of mercy, the extent of his mercy that he had for us, the grace that he was willing to extend to us. And so when we do come on Easter, is it about the bunny? I think they're fun, right? Is it about the chocolate? Let's just say yes. I mean, we made it from Valentine's Day. You all probably snatched back a whole lot of chocolate then. You can snatch back a whole lot of chocolate today, and I don't think there's any harm in that. And so we look at that, and we talk about, look back and remember the grace, but I do remember the sacrifice of Jesus, his pain and his love that he endured at the cross. And yet, even in darkness, hope arose. And even in darkness, today brings uh, resurrection, redemption, amen, healing and eternal life. I'm going to read out of Mark chapter 16 and verse 1 through 8. I think that any story that we find through through these particular verses, talking about his resurrection, talking about the tomb, talking about the cross... I would probably much more rather uh, minister today about the sky growing dark and the earth begin to shake because that was our defining moment in a way. That was the kickoff of our defining moment that when the veil was torn in two from top to bottom and he opened up access so that you and I can come to him one-on-one driving down the road, one-on-one sitting on the couch, one-on-one mowing the yard. We can come to him one-on-one. We don't need anybody to go before us. We don't need anyone. We don't have to tie a rope around the priest's leg in the hopes that he don't have sin in his life and we have to drag his carcass back out from behind the veil any longer. But today we can celebrate even Friday's business because we have full access to the Holy of Holies. That when I cry, Abba, Father, when I cry out, Jesus, I have his ear. When you cry out, Jesus, you have his ear. You don't have to wait on Wednesday. You don't have to wait on Sunday. You don't have to wait on Monday night Bible study. We have his ear because of the things that happened on Friday. And I'm very excited about that. And uh, we talked last week about the donkey being uh, loosed. And, And I would love to talk more about that story that when you think about when Jesus sent them to get the donkey, that he not only loosed the donkey, but he loosed the donkey for a purpose. I think we forget, or at least we stand on the fact, that Jesus freed us or saved us from something, saved us or saves us from a devil's hell. But we never go further than that. He didn't just save me from something. He saved me for something. And that for something could be you ministering to your family. That for something could be you being the light in the darkness in your workplace. It could be of you being the only light that your children see because we're dealing in the craziest time in the world that we've ever seen in history. But today I'm going to dive back just a little bit to the scene that you just saw and possibly uh, talk about when the tomb was found empty. And it said, now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, bought spices, and they went <clears throat> that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. I don't know how many of you were here earlier. I do know how many. I know 114 people were here this morning at 645 or earlier, but I don't know how many of you were in that, in that crowd. But that's why we came this morning, right? We came at sunrise. There's a purpose to having a sunrise service. And now that you know the purpose, we'll see you next year. 645. And and they said among themselves, who will roll the stone away at the door of the tomb tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was was very large. The entering of the, the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in long white robe sitting to the right hand or the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. And here's the defining moment for us uh, today. He is risen. I think that if you don't hear anything else today, he is not here, right? See the place where he was or the place where they laid him. You see, I think that's about the most beautiful moment in our 
walk with God, when we have that revelation that he is alive, we have that revelation that he has risen, we have that revelation that because he has resurrected, we too can be resurrected. Many times we don't allow him to resurrect the dead places in our lives. Many times we accept his salvation, we ask him to be our risen savior, we head that direction, but we still deal with the dead things in our life. When God has allowed us, he's been given us permission He gave us the power. He has given us the authority through his resurrection that we can walk right out of that dead mess just like he did. And so they went out quickly and fled from the tomb and they trembled and were amazed and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. You see, Jesus' death was proof that he was man. That's fair, right? But Jesus' resurrection is proof that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. We could challenge it and you're welcome to. I don't generally argue scripture. I'll be glad to read it to you. I'll let you get your understanding from that. We may even jerk out a concordance and talk about it. I've never been one to argue scripture. I don't think there's basis for your side of the argument. Much as I love you. If you want to be right all the time, get in the word. Uh, I have people that they think they're the smartest person in the room all the time. No matter what, right? They have to be the smartest person in the room. If you want to be the smartest person in the room when debating the Bible, be on the Bible side of it. Be on the Bible side of the argument or the Bible side of things. And so when I think about the resurrection, I am moved. I'm moved all the way back to Friday because I know what it took to get there. I know what he felt for us to get there. I know how he dealt in himself that when he was praying that he sweated drops of blood. There was so much anguish, so much pressure, right? So much stress maybe. But I know that he could have backed out any time he wanted to. He could have at any moment when he was hanging on the cross called for God to send angels to come and rescue him. And I have a pretty good idea. I have a, pretty, I have a great imagination actually and very animated one to be honest. But I can almost picture in the corridors of heaven on Friday, in the corridors of heaven, that all of heaven was lined with angels. And I don't want you to see angels as, as these uh, prissy um uh, just little wings flapping type angels. Uh, my angels are different. If your angels are that, you don't have angels like I've got. My angels can kick the devil's behind, right? My angels can, uh, at, at God's command, kick all the demons behind. And, and so when I see that, I'm thinking that the corridors of heaven were lined and waiting as they saw and as they watched their Jesus give his life for us. I, I was think they were waiting with ears attentive to hear him say, come get me, they're not worth it. But instead, when he cried out, he cried out with a loud voice, it is finished. And I think about that, and can I challenge you with this, if you'll accept Christ in your heart today, I can promise you, you can declare the very same thing, that because of Christ, and because Christ is alive, my regret, my shame, my guilt, my sin, it is finished. And so we begin to walk different, talk different, stand different, and do all the things different, right? I'm not a believer that you just get saved just to get saved. I'm not a believer that you ask Jesus into your heart on a 911 and think that you're going to go anywhere with that. I believe that when we ask Jesus in our heart, he knows that, that repentant heart. He knows if it's just lip service or heart service. I was talking to someone recently who's been struggling. He struggles a while, and, or he does good a while, and he struggles a while, and he quits a while. And so he's been struggling right now, and uh, coming right out of quitting, he come right back into struggling. And I was talking to him the other day about being repentant and having a repentant heart, and this person said, I've asked forgiveness. And I said, oh yeah, that's lip service, but have you repented? But I asked forgiveness, but have you repented? You see, repent means to turn around. And so if I'm going to repent, I'm going to turn around and go another direction, If I'm just asking forgiveness, then it's possible that I'm just looking for something to ease my conscience. I'm not looking for anything to change my life. But when I repent, when I ask forgiveness with a repentant heart, I accept the forgiveness he has for me. I accept what he did at Calvary. I accept what he did at the empty tomb. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I turn and go the other way. You see, so many people in this day and time especially, right, we deal with a lot of greasy grace. I don't know if you deal with that or not that we sin more because there's so much grace, right? That we can sin so much more because there's so much more grace. But Scripture tells us that's not so. Scripture says absolutely not. 
when we repent, when we ask forgiveness, and we turn and head the other direction, we only look back for a testimony. I only look back to be a witness. I only look back to see what God has done for me. And I can share it with the next person I run into. And so this morning, I want to read this next portion of Scripture, and you just saw it played out. It's in, uh, it's in Mark chapter 14, and I'll start with verse 22. And as they were eating, and we saw that, right? As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and He blessed it, and He broke it, and He gave it to them, and He said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then He took the cup, and He said, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. And I think about the moment, and I've never, actually, we've never done communion at Easter, but God pulled me back to that this year. And I don't know that he told me I had never done it. I just knew we had never done it for Easter. And I think about that. And if you, there's another portion of Scripture that says to do this in remembrance of me. There's no other place that he says that. He doesn't say do a Christmas play in remembrance of me, though we do. He doesn't say do skits uh, every quarter in remembrance of me, though we do. He doesn't say do I have an Easter cantata or do an Easter drama in remembrance of me. And so if we're going to celebrate today, and if we're going to come together today, I think it's perfectly fitting that we partake of the Lord's Supper. I think it's perfectly fitting that we do the very thing that He says, do this in remembrance of me. I don't need you to just come in all dressed up and talk about what Sally wore to church last week. Come in and say, I can't believe the pastor tucked his shirt in. And by the way, surprise, I didn't today. So you know. I don't think we're here just for the fellowship, though it's just for the fellowship. I think that when we come in on Easter more than any other time, we should come in remembrance of Him and the sacrifice that He made for us. And so this morning, if, uh, if you would like to partake, I know that you've received a cup today. I'm hoping that you can get your lids separated. Uh, the top lid takes the bread and the, the next lid takes the juice. But I would like to just speak to you before I do that. There's a scripture that you can find in, scripture, in, uh, in the Bible that says that when we partake of this, do this in remembrance of Him, but it also goes on to say, anyone who partakes of the Lord's Supper unworthily is operating in a danger zone. He says, let's make sure our heart is right. Let's make sure we're good, right, with the Lord. That we shouldn't take it unworthily that unless we're a child of God, we should not play with that ministry, ministering time. And so, I'm going to just speak to those that may be here for the first time in a long time, or maybe you're here for the first time. You're here today, not, I don't believe in happenstance. I don't believe in coincidence. I do believe in divine appointment. I do believe that God has us in a, at any point of a appointed hour at any appointed moment that he will open up a door of ministry and that's why we're here today so if someone invited you to church and you received their invitation can I share something real quick with you they love you or they would have never cared to invite you they care about you and so today I'm, I'm believing that if this isn't your home church we can still commune together if maybe you're visiting from another church today, we can still break bread together. You see, a long time ago, God showed us that we're not in competition with anybody else. Or you. We're all in this together. And so whatever side of the tracks you're from, we're all in this together. However much money you have, we're all in this together. Jesus died for the rich. He died for the poor. He died for the privileged. Jesus died for the ones that have two pennies to rub together or if they, don't have, or they have two million dollars. This morning, I'll ask you before we take, partake of the bread and the juice, where do you stand with God? Where do you stand? Have you allowed Him to be ushered into your life? You see, some of us build a wall up. We've gone through too much. You don't know, Pastor, what I've been through. You don't know how I've been treated all my life. You don't know how I was raised. You don't know... And the fact is, I don't know. But when Jesus was hanging on that cross and had every opportunity to call the angels to come and rescue Him, He knew. Scripture says that while we were at our worst, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
I can picture that and possibly say that while I was sinning my greatest sins, while I was at the nastiest of the nasty of my life, right? Jesus knew that. When I was being broken, when I was being talked about, when I was being run down, when someone was cheating on me or cheating against me, He knew it. And so this morning you come into an awesome opportunity to receive, number one, Christ as your Savior today if He's not. And number two, to break bread with fellow believers on this Easter day as we do this in remembrance of Him. You see, I would hate to think that I forgot about this part. I would hate to think that I didn't offer opportunity for this part. But He says that if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. You see, I can dress the part. I know all the right things to say. But I also know where my heart's at. So you know how to dress the part, maybe. Or maybe you're new at this and you don't know how to dress the part, right? You're new at this and you don't know what to say. Well, this morning, there's a Jesus that loves you and knows exactly what to say. And as much as He declared it is finished today, if you would call on His name to make Him or receive Him as your Lord and Savior, if you would repent with a repentant heart, He's going to say, welcome home. You see, the picture of the prodigal son, for those of you that may or may not know the story, the prodigal son was one of two sons that had wanted his inheritance so he could run off and do whatever. He didn't want to be bound to his father any longer. And he ran off and he squandered all his money and he found himself in a pig pen. And it was in that pig pen, after he had spent all of his money, that he got great revelation, said, if I could just go home to the father, I would rather be his servant than to be where I'm at right now. And so maybe you've even been, and I doubt this is true because I can't smell you this morning. Maybe you've been in the pig pen. Maybe you feel like you've been the worst of the worst or had the worst of the worst life. I promise you that Jesus went to Calvary for that, that thought, for that moment. I want to pray with you before we partake of the bread and take of the juice. But this morning, if you're in right relationship with Christ, I'm just going to ask you to pray, believe, that if there's anyone here that isn't, that they'll just be loved right into the kingdom of glory. That they would be loved right into the kingdom of heaven. That they would be loved right into the family of God. You see, he says that we have been, once we've received Christ, we have been adopted into the kingdom of heaven. Real quick, at least in the state of Virginia, if you adopt someone and then it comes down to inheritance time, if there's no will, they could really challenge it because if you've been adopted, you've been chosen. So this morning, you've been chosen. He's saying, I want you to come and be a part of my family. Come and be a part. Like the prodigal son, when he got out of the pig pen, he went running home expecting to at least at best case be the servant. And as his dad, as a father, saw him afar off, he said he'd been watching and saw him afar off. And he didn't run to him and say, look what you've done. Look what a mess you've made. Look how much money you've spent. And look what a... He ran and he fell upon his son's shoulder. And he said, welcome home. This morning, the father is waiting to run to you if you're willing to step toward him. So if you're here this morning with everybody's eyes closed and heads bowed, and maybe you would want to be bold enough to say, Pastor, I'm going to start fresh today. I want to give my heart to the Lord this morning. I'm going to declare resurrection in my spirit on this Resurrection Sunday. If that's you, if you slip your hand straight up, back down, I'm just going to pray with you, pray for you. Now this morning, for those who are saved or already praying, those who may or may not be this morning, but you just want to pray anyway, I'm just going to offer you a model prayer, I guess. I, we would call it that. As, at least that's the way I gave my heart to the Lord. And It's been 34 years. It's not been 34 years of perfection, but it's been 34 years of progression. 34 years of grace. And so this morning, if you'd like to give your heart to the Lord and start fresh, it's just as simple as saying, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Make me new. I choose to be resurrected on this Resurrection Sunday. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer or something close, you're welcome to keep on praying if you like.
But I want us to all partake together. I would like for everyone, if possible, to participate. If it's out of your comfort zone, you don't have to. If you feel like maybe, based on the scripture I talked about a moment ago, you would rather wait. You see, when we take communion, we are remembering the sacrifice that Christ made for us over 2,000 years ago. And so this morning, if you would take the bread with me, and he said, take this bread and eat it. And he says in Scripture, do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread this morning? And as we took that bread that represented his body being broken for us. We wouldn't be quite finished, would we? Because as much as we need the healing for our bodies. More so we need salvation for our soul. And so then he took the blood. Took the, took the juice. Took the wine. And he said, this is my blood, co blood covenant, the new covenant, that I've shed my blood for you for the remission of your sin. And I'm going to pray over this before we take it. God, we're so grateful and so thankful. God, we're thankful for your sacrifice, for your love for us. God, that, man, you have loved us in spite of us. You have loved me in spite of me. So God, this morning as I take this cup, let me be reminded of the new covenant in your blood. Let me be reminded that though it's 2,000 plus years since you've done it, it's as fresh today. Your blood holds as much power today as it did 2,000 years ago. Thank you for shedding your blood for me, for the remission of my sin, just for the asking. In Jesus' name, would you partake? I want us to stand, if we could. I think we're still battling a cup over here. You can stand with us. We're going to sing together if that's all right, and then we'll come back and close service. Let's give him praise this morning.
Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, thank you guys for coming and being with us today. I hope you're going to go home and spend some time with family. Hey, listen, even Lowe's is closed today, fellas. I know. It's a sad day. I'm kidding. It is a good day. It is a great day. Thank you for coming out and being with us. There is a, there is a balloon uh, wall outside if you'd like to get some pictures. I know y'all like to do that. Uh, my bride may drag me out there after a while and we'll get one too, but... Listen, we love you guys. You're welcome here anytime, 9.30 and 11 on, on Sundays, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. We'd love to have you come be a part of our family if you're a guest today and you don't have a home church. And for the rest of you, we'll see you Wednesday night. Amen? God bless you guys. Shake some hands. Tell somebody you love them. If you gave your heart to the Lord today, share it with somebody. We love you guys. Have a good one.